Hi, uh, hi everyone. My name is Nico. I'm going to be talking to you about uh, live television programming. But before I get to my claim, I'll ask you a few questions just to kind of leave this off. So, uh, how many of you watch live TV regularly? So, if you can go ahead and raise your hands. <laughs> <laughs> like live television? No? Really? Only two people? All right. Um, <laughs> well, of those people who did raise their hands, uh, how many of you are satisfied with your cable company, like your services? <laughs> I was actually expecting more people to watch live television, but I guess not. But anyways, uh, how many of you watch shows on streaming sites such as Netflix or Hulu regularly? Oh, there we go. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, how many of you think your parents watch more live TV than you do? Alright, um, so those transition to my four points. Uh, my claim is that television companies cannot currently survive solely based on traditional live television programming. Um, and my second claim will be uh, that less people are watching television, as evidenced by everyone not raising their hands, or live television, excuse me. And uh, cable TV customers are becoming increasingly dissatisfied with their cable service. I didn't really get a good sample on that one because not many people watch TV, but. Uh, and then the number of people watching online videos is increasing, uh, further diluting the traditional television consumer base. And uh, as this generation's youth age into adulthood, tra traditional TV viewership will only decrease. And so my first point, less people are watching television. According to SNLK, again, a media research firm, the number of paid TV subscriptions decreased by over 250,000 in 2013, the first full year decrease that was reported. Uh, and Experian, a global information services group, also reports that the number of households in the U.S. that have high-speed internet but no cable, nicknamed cable cutters, uh, has risen from 4.5% in 2010 to 6.5% in 2013. And uh, part of this might be because that cable, cable TV customers are becoming increasingly dissatisfied with their cable service, which is my second point. Um, SNL Kagan, the group I mentioned before, also reports that the average cable TV bill has increased 97% over the past 14 years, uh, possibly due to decrease in subscriptions, but I can't really say for sure about that. Um, and the Tempkin Group, which is a customer experience research firm, reported in its 2013 customer service ratings that most TV providers rank very low on the list. Uh, Dish. Uh, let me give you examples, some examples. Dish had 38%, uh, DirecTV at 36%, Comcast and Verizon at 30%, Cox at 28%, Time Warner had 25%, and at the very, very end of the list is Charter with 22%. Uh, and to just this comparison, the highest uh, on the list had about 70 to 80% in their customer satisfaction rating. And, uh, my third point is that the number of people watching online videos is increasing, further diluting the uh, traditional television customer base. So as, as you guys probably saw from the questions that I had for you earlier, that most people don't watch TV normally as it's, as it's programmed by the cable networks. They watch it on their own using streaming sites such as Netflix and Hulu. Um, Netflix in particular, in its uh, fourth quarter report to its investors, went from 23.4 million domestic subscribers in the US uh, at the beginning of 2012 to 27.1 million at the end. And, uh, Netflix, and Netflix's series House of Cards, uh, it's exclusively available to Netflix users, and so people who watch live TV can watch it. And that's further giving people more reasons to switch from live TV to alternative methods of TV viewing. And uh, my fourth point, as this generation's youth age into adulthood, traditional TV viewership will only decrease. So young people are starting to watch less and less TV, as an inspired question. <coughs> and, then, um, but, and but statistically, according to marketing charts, yes, that is the, that is the company name, the 18 to 24 age demographic is second only to the 12 to 17 age demographic regarding the least amount of time spent watching TV. And. Uh, Teen TV viewership has continued to decrease in the past few years. Uh, and uh, services such as Netflix and Hulu allow viewers to watch shows on their own schedule without having to uh, 
without having to wait for the program to come on. And so even though there's no real statistics for that, there's no doubt that it's more convenient for people and that it's, uh, for many people, a better option. And so to recap, uh, less people are watching television. Uh, cable TV customers are becoming increasingly dissatisfied with their cable TV uh, service. Uh, the number of people watching online videos and watching shows through other means other than live television is increasing. And uh, as gen this generation's youth age into adulthood, the traditional TV viewership will only decrease. And those points are all to prove the claim that television companies cannot currently survive solely on traditional live television programming. Thank you. All right, I thought that the opening is a little problematic with all the survey stuff that gets complicated, and we'll talk about that a little bit more in just a second, because it, it almost buries what your proposition is. Now, you do get that proposition in there, and there is a good layout of what the secondary points are, so I thought that that was okay. I thought it was much clearer at the end, and I appreciated the summary, because it really put a lot of the supporting points in context and reminded me what it is that the inference is that you're talking about. I'm not sure how much controversy there is on this subject. As uh, media diffuses, as you have more and more options, it's, uh, I think only natural that people um, divert to all of the different options that are available. The question is whether or not they're economically sustainable. I think that's an important question that needs a lot more data on it when it comes to you know their business models and that sort of thing. So if you're talking about broadcast television, uh, for instance, or even cable programming, how much money do they spend? How much money are they taking in? What do they need to be able to take in? Will they be able to do that in the future? I think you need more data on that. The idea that you know that people change their viewing habits as technology comes along, I don't think that's too surprising that uh, people watch uh, YouTube or uh, Netflix or Hulu or any other options that are available to them. I think that that's probably you know going to grow, although you're going to have just as much diffusion, I think, in those as you had in broadcast television. So in other words, people will go to Netflix because they want to get uh, House of Cards, and they'll go to Hulu because they want some other programming that's exclusive to Hulu. And, and basically, all you're saying is that it's going to be delivered online instead of over the air or over cable or satellite. That, I think, is maybe the, the stronger place where there's a little bit more controversy and argument on that. And I think that could be developed a little bit more. I thought the individual points, you signposted them as you got to them, and you had good examples on some of the things. The statistical information on the growth of... Um, of some of those online uh, or sub, you know networks, I, I was going to call them subscription, but you subscribe to Netflix and to Hulu. You know that's different than um, Showtime and HBO and all those sorts of things. By the way, when you say live TV, I think you need to explain what you mean by live TV because I'm sitting here going. How the hell do people watch the freaking Super Bowl on Netflix? You know, I'm, I'm going, what are you talking about here? I watch live TV. I'm thinking it's live. You know, I'm watching the game as it's happening. And I can't imagine all these people are, well, I'm watching a baseball game from two weeks ago that I, you know, uh, it, was, it was available on Netflix for 50 cents, so I thought I'd get that. I'm going, that's not what you're talking about. I didn't know what you were talking about. I guess what you're talking about is it's streaming as opposed to it's, uh, you know, pro, you know, time formatted or time programmed or something like that. That's the differentiation. So on my answers, that's what you have to do. Whenever I had my hand up and you said live TV, I'm thinking I'm watching the results of the election. I'm watching uh, American <laughs> Idol. I'm watching the football game. You know, I'm not. I'm not. Who's what? I'm watching the Trojans on television. It damn well better be live, because otherwise it's, you know, I don't want to see yesterday's game. I want to see the one that's going on right now. Um, like I said, I thought the summary was really effective, kind of trying to make the point and explain to us what's going on. All right, thank you.